my name is Melissa. Um, I am involved with Ubuntu Women, Linux Chicks. I'm a blogger for geekfeminism.org, who is familiar, who reads it, who writes on it. <laughs> oh, you, you need to put your hand up, Valerie. And Mary. <laughs> anyway, um, so my title, title of my talk is Our Sparkle Motion, Empowering the Geekocracy Against the Kariaki. And I have invented at least one of the words in there. <laughs> um, who is familiar with that phrase? The one at the top. I think it is running out of battery, Donna. Yeah. Okay, so there is a movie called Donnie Darko and it's a deep serious movie about depression and all sorts of stuff. And one of the favourite quotes from the cult followers of the movie is that. It's a light-hearted, cheerful way of expressing your following of the movie. Um, so that's kind of the basis of the talk, along with talking about women and girls on the internet. Um, which can end up being a serious discussion. It's part of a bigger problem, and that's where we get to the kariaki. The kariaki is an intertwining groups of dominant and less dominant people, um, such as males and females and transgender intersex being people who don't necessarily have the recognition of identity that they feel, um, whereas males and females do. Then we have heterosexual people who are going to be more accepted and welcomed than homosexual people, not because it's right, but because this is how things are, this is how they were born, and that doesn't necessarily make it right. Temporarily abled people as a pair, compared to people with disabilities, Caucasians as compared to people of colour, Christians as compared to non-Christians, and all of these people, both the dominating and the less dominant groups, all make up what I call the geekocracy, um, which is the community, the way the, that geek communities work. And yes, I did make it up. Um, what the geek community likes to call itself is the meritocracy. And it has a very bad way of implementing this word. Um, what we consider to be the meritocracy nowadays is not necessarily what it was termed to be. I have actually forgotten the definition, which I meant to write down, but didn't. Um, so geek communities aren't a meritocracy. Um, unless you are white, male, hetero, List goes on. If you're one of the dominant, if you fit all of the dominant groups in the societies, then you are going to feel the meritocracy as it is intentioned. But if you're not, don't fit any one of these, then you're going to feel out of place. Um, so what I'm going to say contains some unla unladylike language, unladylike behaviour. In that I'm being uppity, I am important. I am expressing sentiments that distinguish me from a doormat. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? That's because it is. <laughs> Derailing for dummies, it's an evolving document of detailing ways in which you can derail someone's arguments against your oppressive behaviour against their less dominant group. Um, it's meant to be funny, as was Tilios's article on um, The Escapist, where she details how she went on to team speak as a girl with a girl voice. And this was too hard for 
the majority of the men on this TeamSpeak server to cope with. She was blamed for them losing... I mean, what was she playing? WoW? Um, so she was blamed for them losing raids, whatever they're called on there. But it's a matter of in-jokes. Um, we like to call these talking about being a woman in open source discussions as being unicorn talks. If you're a woman in open source, you'll eventually give a talk about being a woman in open source as a derivative of Godwin's law, which says various things about saying nasty things, comparing people to nasty people. So being as we have all these in-jokes, we are quite clearly, as feminists, humorless buzzkills. Yeah. Absolute humorless buzzkills. <laughs> no humor whatsoever. So when we do make jokes, <laughs> Imagine that! <laughs> Imagine that, that image keeps coming up. But this was, this was feminists making a joke. And some people did not entirely enjoy that joke. Which is fair, it, it is an in-joke. We're not a hive mind. We tend to like to call ourselves something a little different. We're not a hive vagina either, to be honest. We don't all think the same. We don't all appreciate the same humour. But we do make jokes because what we are talking about is serious. It is subversive to this hierarchical structure where we, because we have women, are perceived by some portion of the community as lesser than men. But we're not. So this is, we make jokes, this is because serious, subversive, controversial subject matter tends to bore people or scare them. And this is said by a lady blogger by the name of Sadie Doyle. She is a rape victim. She's a rape survivor and she blogs about this. And she makes jokes because what she talks about is scary. It is serious, it is subversive, and it causes confusion. By using these jokes, we can, we can confuse the trolls. We can confuse the people who want us to go away, be quiet. We can diffuse the situation. So off on the screen, we have some memes, some, this is called, um, what is it? Privileged That's it, thank you. <laughs> Privileged denying dude. It's a white guy in a professional suit looking all smug going, your idea sounds so much better when I rephrase it. Does that sound familiar to anyone in the room? I think Peter might get a little jealous, but... <laughs> Another smug looking... I don't know, is he actually white? I think we'll just, yeah, for the purpose of the exercise. And it's on another one of these meme backgrounds, it says, I'm not privileged, you're just trying to control me. Which is silly. We're making a joke. We're not trying to control people. Yet this is the kind of responses that we'll get when we say, please don't, please stop. And come back to this other guy. Feminism is outdated and sexism is no more. Women are just too stupid to see that. <laughs> yes, it's over. <laughs> I think I talked a bit too fast, sorry. Okay, so questions, questions discussions. Can I bring up something you mentioned about the games that 
The Team Fortress too, yeah, for people who don't know what TF2 stands for. I'm not a gamer, but I'm, yeah. And uh, oddly enough, we have quite a few regular female players um, who have come to the Reddit server because they, they get to be called 12-year-old boys and, and harassed. Yes. But I find it really surprising. Um, you, you, will, you will have, yeah. Um, you're obviously familiar with the concept that any woman on a game server is a guy wanting to get free stuff. Actually, it's normally they're on the game server because they're better than me. Yes. <laughs> That's the other yeah, but I mean, there's various reasons why people in game servers either are women, presents as women, play as women, why they may choose to sound like a 12 year old boy as compared to saying, hey, no, I'm not a 12-year-old guy, I'm actually a woman. Because sometimes it's easier to not be known as the woman. It's sometimes easier to be the 12-year-old boy that you're not, but no one's going to pick on you, no one's going to hit on you, no one's going to... So it just could be that it's easier for them. It kind of irritates us too. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, that article by Telios was in 2006, I think. So it, it slowly changes, but the, the operative word there is slowly. Yep, any more? What are your suggestions on, on outreach? <coughs> taking the piss. That's, what the, that's the whole point of the memes, is to make it so bleeding obvious what the problem is, because once you see them, it's like, can't unsee. It's... And might I suggest... Sorry, sorry. No, please. Might I suggest that you come back to the workshop? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's exactly the kind of thing that, that Val's going to go into. Yeah, allies, right? Yeah. Yes. That's our term. That, that's a social justice term, I think, more than our term, but... Yeah. 